Hey guys, we have Team Liquid versus Clutch Gaming. We're gonna be VOD reviewing this one. This one was super interesting to look at because in a sense, it looks like Clutch Gaming inted, but I'll tell you what they were trying to do with their draft and some of the problems that arise with the draft itself. So Clutch did something I thought was kind of crazy, which is they gave TL two of, one of, two of the strongest picks in the meta in Akali and Aatrox. And the only thing they got for it was the Slandra here. I really think their draft should have been different, where if they give first pick Akali, what they need to do is take Lissandra Aatrox together. But they ended up not, so I was really confused what um, Clutch was trying to do here, because, yeah, like, why are you giving TL2 power picks? It kind of explained it throughout, but I'll still go over it. So... What Clutch is trying to do is they're trying to beat TL early game. They're identifying we're stronger than TL early game, and Impact is probably not the greatest on carry, so we're going to target them there. So we're going to give Impact a carry, and we're going to try to beat them through early game. Caitlyn, Lulu, definitely early game priority. Rumble into Akali, an early game priority thing. Lissandra into Aatrox, an early game priority thing. But one thing I actually thought was kind of problematic is them taking Olaf here. So Olaf is not that great of an early game jungler. And by early game, I mean like level one, level two, even like level three-ish, there's so much junglers that are stronger than Olaf. Like for example, Lee Sin is much stronger than Olaf. So them taking Caitlyn here is really awkward because they kind of give Lee but take Caitlyn. So I'll show you guys where this is super, super problematic. We'll go to early game. Why didn't double if pick Israel? He could have picked Israel or Sibir. Either would have been fine. But just know this, Clutch is drafting to beat Team Liquid early game. And this is something that happens in. Yeah, Xin Zhao is something that's much stronger earlier on. So there's just one point in the game that I really want to break down heavily and after that point we can talk about many different stuff. It's the level 1 and 2. So Olaf is starting blue, right? And Lee Sin is starting red. And both bot laners are not leashing. So what this means is both bot laners are going to play for priority. So Caitlyn Lulu playing for priority. And Fibber Braum playing for priority. And this will... Some, something happens that's really strange that I feel like should never happen. If Caitlyn Lulu pushes like this and they have to back up because Lee Sin is coming, then they're in a really, really bad spot. Because then their wave is pushing away from them and TL is able to catch the wave completely. If they're playing like this, where they're playing to push up and playing to pressure them, then Olaf has to do blue buff and then come down. But that's not what's happening. Olaf is doing two camps and coming down. So Clutch is already in a very... Clutch is already in a very separated position where it's... Their bot lane is playing for level one priority and their jungle is not playing for the level one priority. So they're gonna be kind of stranded on an island and that's exactly what happens. Lee Sin's able to come in. They go on the Lulu that was far ahead and they kill the Lulu. They're able to get a trade kill by using Rumble Teleport, but that's so much invested to be able to do that. And now Piglet can't pressure the turret by himself and he's not gonna be able to get the plating and Vulcan burned his flash. So they're no longer able to really pressure this because Vulcan no longer has his flash and the whole point of picking Kate Lulu into Silver Braum is gone. They're not going to be able to get plays. They're not going to be able to like play to pressure them in any kind of way. So the whole one thing that's good about playing pressure bot lanes nowadays is you're able to get multiple amount of plays. But that's not even going to be the case. Double is going to be able to teleport back, hold this turret forever. So... Yeah, like, 
clutch gaming major win condition in being able to pressure bot lane early game and take multiple plate if gone. And the whole point of picking Caitlyn is gone too. Sivir just outscales Caitlyn so much. Okay, I can go a little bit over why what Israel and Sivir differ in. Uh, Sivir, Sivir has better wave clear, but Israel has better contest. Israel's better in like skirmishes and small fights that are going to happen. And it's a lot of preference too. Because the enemy team has Olaf and Lissandra, probably Sivir's a little bit better too. Yeah, but if you guys watch bot lane, Caitlyn is not going to be able to build a CS lead over the Sivir. And that's so hugely problematic. So, so problematic. Also, okay, so someone else was asking about how Olaf is not a strong early game jungler. Olaf is a decently strong early game jungler, but not in early levels. In level 1 and 2-ish, champions like Xin Zhao, Camille, and Lee Sin are stronger than Olaf. Where Olaf is really strong is after the first phase where he gets Predator. But level 1, 2-ish, Camille, Xin Zhao, Lee Sin are stronger. So that's why I think Clutch should have taken a different jungler and also just what happened in level 1 and 2 was so bad for Clutch. Lo that level 1 and 2 play completely ruined bot lane. Completely ruined bot lane. They're never going to be able to pressure the same way and they're never going to be able to pressure the way they want. Look, Caitlyn Rule is actually forced to play so far back and they're the ones without priority. The lane is just completely done. Do you think it was correct to give Clutch first Inferno? I mean, they didn't have priority to be able to really contest Clutch. It's okay to give it to them. The first Inferno didn't matter too much. It's nice to get, but it's not game breaking. So another problem is even though Rumble beats Akali early, later on in the game, Akali is going to be able to beat Rumble in a side lane. So the Akali Rumble thing is not going to matter too much. Uh, I can understand where what Clutch was trying to do with their draft. I just wish they drafted a different jungler. If they drafted a different jungler and play the early game better, I think this game looks much, much different. How they approach the draft was fine, it's just, why Olaf, and also, why does Olaf do two camps if bot lane is gonna push? That disconnect of what happened in that level 1 and 2 just set the tone of this entire game. I know I'm talking about that point over and over again, but that was the single most important thing that happened this game. The fact that bot lane played for priority level 1, and the Olaf played to get two camps and then come down instead of doing one camp and coming down. This Ocean Drake's really nice though. I mean, Lyra able to, Lyra constantly being able to get objectives like this is good for Clutch, but their comp is just gonna get outscaled. Once it gets to mid game, like Sibir gets their items, Aatrox gets their items, Akali gets their items, Clutch has no way to win the fight. <laughs> And this shit is going to just happen more and more, by the way. Like, because... So, a lot of people will probably be like, Why doesn't Piglet play more back here? You know, Piglet could play more back. And honestly, Piglet should be playing more back. It's just the fact that he picked Caitlyn versus Sivir. And the whole point of picking Caitlyn is to have a CS lead and to pressure. So, it puts enormous amount of pressure on the Caitlyn to able to play for it and to get a CS lead. So Piglet's doing his best to actually play forward and get a lot of autos and stuff. And yeah, he's just probably incredibly frustrated with what happened in level 1 and 2. So, yes, that death from Piglet is actually really bad, but I understand completely why he died. Who wouldn't be frustrated? You pick a comp to be able to pressure and then your team doesn't pressure, or your team fucks up something super simple. 
he should know he should be playing back here, but he's playing with his brains off. As for Impact playing carries, I have an interview coming out with Impact about him playing carries, so be sure to catch that interview. But yeah, basically, game was lost at draft. No, nah, it wasn't lost at drafts. Um, Clutch put themselves in a awkward situation in draft where they are at least playing to their team's win condition and what they do better than TL, but they weren't able to execute the draft they drafted. They drafted a very mm, execution-heavy draft, and they weren't able to execute it. I don't think it was immediately lost in draft. It just... It's more comp it's more play than draft. I can't really even say it's draft because if clutch drafts pretty standard versus TL, I think TL just crushes them. TL's boring to watch, by the way. I still think TL's boring to watch. I think they're really good and also really boring. Maybe if Impact plays more carries, I might change my mind. But I still think TL's one of the most boring top teams to watch. The only thing fun about TL is double is shit talking and the possibility of them being able to be good internationally. I, good and boring is not bad. As like a team owner, as like a coach, I would love to have a good and boring team. Just as a spectator, not my favorite thing to watch. This Herald was so wasted though. Probably X Minty wanted to use Herald early as possible because it's kind of awkward to hold on to Herald. Oh, this team fight. Impact positioning here is actually so good. How did he even end up there? Oh, Impact walked in and waited in this pink brush. Saw Rumble coming in. Q, able to choke out the Rumble. Fourth Rumble to the right side. Now they can hold the left choke. Damn, Impact played that super well. He burned Huni Flash for free, and then they're holding the left side. They have mid control, and they can just buy time here forever. CG's in such an uncomfortable position because they can't just fuck around with this dragon forever, and they need to actually engage and TL can just keep waiting and wait for Clutch to make a bad move. They can just wait for Clutch to make a bad move, which is what they're doing. x never missing smite. Even if they gave that Inferno, it's not that big of a deal. They would still outscale. This positioning from Jensen was kind of troll though. Caitlyn losing turret to Sivir. Oh, this feels so bad as the uh, Caitlyn fight. Caitlyn's down CS to Sivir, loses first turret to Sivir. As a Caitlyn, you just lost all purpose. You, lo you lost all purpose as like what you're supposed to do and what you're trying to be. Now, when it comes to team fighting, Sivir is going to be a better team fighter. There's no more laning phase. Piglet is strictly playing the worst champion. Like at this point in the game, there's nothing that Caitlyn does better than Sivir. It's just going to come down to team fights, and as we talked about, it's the kind of same situation as when we were reviewing the TSM and FlyQuest game. TL has a better team fighting comp, they even have a win condition and split push, and Clutch has to force the team fight with them also, but they can't win the team fight. They can't, there's no realistic way of clutch to win now. TL beats them in both team fight and foot push. The only thing they can do is make a catch or play off a of TL's mistake. If TL doesn't make a mistake, and if clutch doesn't make a catch, then TL will just win this game. Ooh, this trap setup is actually nice from Piglet. There's so many angles that clutch can approach though. Yeah, they can send someone around, which they're doing. They're sending Akali all the way around so she can threaten from this angle. It's so dangerous for Clutch to actually walk up here, right? Because Impact can go over here. And the longer they wait, the wider flank that Impact can get. If they wait too long, Impact's going to go all the way around and Clutch is going to be sandwiched from two angles. Impact can even go around one more angle. It's just so awkward for Clutch. They're just in a position where they're like, uh, guys, we need to do something and... I, yeah, when they're in a position where they're forced to do something and forced to make a move, it's going to be much easier for TL. Oh, Impact going in there. So this one was really good by Demonte. So when Impact's trying to look for another flank angle again, but Demonte hit in the brush and he was able to land a good ult. x able to get the Inferno though, and Jensen going in. 
and double being too strong of a back blind. Double positioning there with almost problematic. Forced to burn flash and impact knight. They need to get this dragon quick. Yeah, there's just so much threat on TL side. No, so someone saying Vulcan played this match really bad. It's just, Vulcan was in like a really hard spot. They picked a very execution heavy draft. I wouldn't blame Vulcan too much for this one. They had a set game plan that was hard to execute, and they failed their execution. Ugh, oh, look at Piglet. Oh, it's so hard for Caitlyn to live in team fights. Yeah, this game's over, boys. You might be like, Local, you're calling the game too early. It's only 28 minutes. There's only an 8k gold difference or a 7k gold difference, but it's just the fact that one team has a Fiver and one team has a Caitlyn. Clutch's win condition with Olaf lives 2v2. And that can be a win condition, but Aatrox leaves in or no pushover when it comes to the 2v2 either. I think their really big win condition was Caitlyn Lulu taking multiple trading, plating and having a lot of priority bottom. Why did Olaf buy a redemption? It's like a Korean thing. The biggest question is, why did Lulu buy a redemption? Why does Clutch have two redemptions? Shouldn't the Lulu be getting Ardent if the Olaf is going to be getting a redemption? It sounds super fucking troll, but I think between the Olaf and the Lulu, the Olaf should be the one building redemption and Lulu actually builds Ardent. Double lift has three items plus QSS. <laughs> Double lift has three items plus QSS. How the fuck is he going to die? Is the list going to ult him? Is the Caitlyn going to auto him? The problem with Caitlyn even outranging Fiver and trying to auto him is Fiver using ult and just like walking up to Caitlyn to hit makes it really hard for Caitlyn. Clutch has no way to beat TL in team fights. This game's brutal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this review is kind of over. I, I watched the rest of this game, but also it's just... If I was shown this game state even without watching, it's just... What can Clutch do now? How can they open up the game? They have to camp a brush with Lissandra on top of a pink ward and try to pick off one of TL. There are like pe people that are kind of pick offable, I guess. Actually, there isn't. Because Lee and Aatrox both have Guardian Angels and Aatrox has his ultimate. Akali has Janius and his and her Shroud. Braum isn't really pick offable. The only person that's really able to be picked off is Doublelift, but Doublelift also has Spell Shield and QSS. There's just too much fail safe switches for TL. Let's see, Clutch has no way to win. Yeah. Oh. I don't think Clutch's draft was troll as what a lot of people make it out to be, but it was still extremely hard to execute. But that level one, level two lost the game completely. I did not want to look at Reddit comments. I'm going to stop doing that. Reddit comments have actually been garbage. So let's give an MVP to someone. If I have to give an MVP... I'll probably give it to Double or XMD. Or maybe even Core JJ. From what I heard in their team now, Core JJ basically says when bot lane should fight, when bot lane should play safe. So it, it's either Core. I'll, I'll probably give it to Core this game. All right.
Core, you get my MVP for this game. Good job for telling the team when to fight and when to not.